Towing and payload. Trucks compete on those two like crazy. You see it in every advertisement for any pickup or heavy SUV. And if you notice that they're all best in class, how's that possible? Let's find out how towing and payload are actually determined through a little something you should know about called J2807. Payload and towing are so important that Ford has recently rolled out a whole new technology option that measures and shows you what you got going on. There are some scales built into the bed or the body of the latest F-150 as an option, and it'll show you your weight and your loading level on either the center screen dash or on the Ford Pass app on your phone, or interestingly, on a set of, I think, four blinking segment indicators, some LED bar graph stuff going on in the taillights while you're back there watching someone load your truck full of manure with a skip loader. So a whole bunch of ways to see what that truck's carrying and make it easy to figure out graphically, am I at the top of my range or not? You can even tear the truck, zero it out like a scale, and use it as a big scale to actually see a approximate number of how much stuff you put in it. Kind of the ultimate bathroom scale on wheels. But who says those numbers are accurate on any of this stuff? That's where the Society of Automotive Engineers come in. They're pretty much the technical congress for the auto industry. And SAE has a spec called J2807. What this does, and it's fairly recent by the way, is lay out guardrails so that whenever a truck manufacturer says they can tow or carry this, they got there by a common set of testing specs. So it's apples to apples when you compare those ratings out in the marketplace, not GM doing their test and Dodge doing theirs and Ford having a whole nother one. That doesn't tell you much, but now the numbers do. Among the things J2807 specifies is GCWR, Gross Combined Weight Rating. That is a truck, its own weight, occupants, a driver and a passenger and 150 pounds each, a full load in the bed, and carrying a trailer that is fully loaded to its specification. That total package is Gross Combined Weight Rating. That's why the word combined is in there. Now, since the J2807 spec was written, the CDC has come along and found that we weigh more than the SAE thinks we do. The latest figures are that an American male averages about 200 pounds, not 150. Average female, 170, not 150. So maybe the SAE needs to take a closer look at how many Pringles and sodas we've been eating and up the numbers a bit. But anyway, it's still apples to apples. Then there are propulsion tests. Once you got the vehicle loaded up, how well does it go zero to 60? That's a common one. Or 40 to 60 on a level road, pulling its full weight. Then you've also got some grade tests. How well can this thing do five starts in five minutes, fully loaded, pulling a trailer of either 1,000, 2,000, maybe 3,500 pounds. They have set trailer scenarios, if you will. And of course, the goal there is doing that up a 12% grade five times in five minutes and not conking out. 12% is pretty stout. I know a lot of you think you've been running up 30% grades. People don't understand grades very well. You probably crawl up a 30% grade. But driving up a 12% grade with a load, it's a pretty good test. And of course, there are specs for how well the vehicle can brake to a stop, how well the parking brake holds. No sense in having a load if your parking brake can't hold it with a comfort factor beyond that. And also, how sway is dealt with and how that can be controlled by the truck. And that's covered in another SAE spec. But the most interesting part of J2807 is the Davis Dam grade test. That's an actual road in Arizona on State Route 68. You can see by the contour, it's a pretty tough one to drive. And that grade is driven by a truck loaded up to the specification that the manufacturer wants to say they can do and advertise has to be done on a day that is 100 degrees Fahrenheit or hotter, not too hard to do in Arizona much of the year, and with the AC running full blast. No kidding. You can also simulate that per the SAE spec in a wind tunnel, in a lab that's gonna simulate the grade and such at different times. But some automakers love to go out there because it's a great photo op and they even turn it into a promotional thing. Now one thing that this spec, and really no spec, can really portray is what it feels like 
to pull a certain load up a certain grade or to accelerate a certain distance. That subjective stuff is tricky. Did the truck have to be all the way to the floor or was it two thirds throttle? Did it feel like it was laboring? Was it making all kinds of noises or was it still very quiet under load? You still have to drive a truck to figure that out. However, this gives you some pretty good guardrails to say when one manufacturer says they can pull or tow this and another one says they can do something more, you do have a real difference between those two. Okay, so so much for the engineering in J2807's specifications. There's a lot more I didn't cover, as you can imagine. But let's get down to the real world factors, and no one can tell us that better than my roadshow colleague, Emmy Hall, who has spent more time in trucks on and off road, and I think right side up and upside down. <laughs> No, I, I've never will. rolled a truck. I've rolled a buggy, but I've never rolled a truck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, important distinction. Okay, what she's rolled and what she hasn't. So, Em, when you take a look at towing and payload capacity, how much should someone who's buying a truck or a heavy SUV really get down to the last 100 pounds, or is it more of a general number? I mean, in a sense, it is a general number. Um, you know, I would feel comfortable towing maybe 100, 150 pounds over that. But you really do need to pay careful attention to that weight because what those engineers have done is they've told the manufacturers, okay, in order to tow safely, you need to have X amount of frame strength. You need to have X amount of cooling. You need to have X amount of brakes. And if you overload your truck, something bad is probably going to happen. Either you're gonna overheat super bad, you're gonna cook your brakes and not stop, or you're just gonna bust out the entire frame of your truck. So they're not doing that to entice you into driving, into purchasing a bigger truck. Like there really is a reason behind there. So a couple hundred pounds, maybe that's okay. But if you need to tow like a thousand pounds or more, you gotta go up another notch in the, in the duty system. Okay, so, uh, so you mentioned some of the things that a, pe a person should be aware of if they overload a truck, uh, whether they're towing or payload. Have you had any issues where you've been out and had an overloaded vehicle? What is it, what's it like? Well, I, I personally have not, although um, we moved some tile the other day for, uh, for this new house that I bought and we had to separate it into two separate vehicles. So I put like 1200 pounds of it into my friend's Tacoma and I put 800 pounds of it into a Mazda CX-30 and both were squatting in the rear. So for that, it was just like, all right, we're just gonna like pray we can get it home and our brakes are okay. You know, and that again, we were overloaded a little bit, but nothing too bad. Um, one of the biggest problems that I have seen is uh, people driving too fast when they're trying to tow something. A, an SUV towing a little trailer and it was raining and that guy passed me doing like 85 miles an hour. And I'm like, that is not very smart, sir. And I uh, started up this pass, came around the corner and there that truck was with rolled over and it was just a yard sale of all their stuff and it had just happened. So, you know, I got out, made sure everyone was okay. And it really, I really just wanted to say, don't drive so fast next time. But I was like, I think he got the idea. Like you, you don't have to tell him I told you so. But that's a really big thing is you, when you're towing, you wanna make sure that you keep your speeds down, you keep your speeds to the speed limit and you drive in that right hand lane. Okay, so this is interesting because uh, you know, trailers, I'll be honest, they're still a bit of a black art and a mystery to me. Yes, I think I know which way to turn to get it to go the right direction, but I haven't, I haven't towed a lot of stuff, right? What other key things are there to know about towing stuff just for the average person? Yeah, well, the first thing you want to be able to do is you want to make sure that you um, balance your trailer correctly, you load your trailer correctly, you know, you don't want to put anything that's heavy on the end of the trailer. Uh, you want to make sure that it's all, all of your weight is towards the front of the trailer because what happens is, is you can start fish tailing like this and then it gets super scary. Um, when you make your turns, you want to make sure that you give yourself a wide turning radius because you're no longer a vehicle with this wheelbase, you're a vehicle with this wheelbase. So you got to make sure you go out and then make your turns. And you know, if, if you have to back up, like, first of all, don't panic, just don't panic. Um, what I like to do is I put my hand on the bottom of the steering wheel. And then if I want to move the car, if I want to move the trailer to the right, I go up to the right, which might be backwards on zoom here, but I don't know. And if I want to move my trailer to the left, I move my hand to the left. So that kind of takes away that backwards thinking in your mind. Um, but then also, you know, like the Ford F-150, and I believe the Ranger also has that pro trailer backup assist, which takes out that backwardness. So that's a really good uh, functionality to have if you're new to towing. Oh, interesting. Okay. So those systems then can, uh, can help you get away that 
get away from that translation, that physical translation you have to do. I always thought of them as just being a way to make sure you're lining up right when you're, when you're going somewhere, but they also flip that around so it feels right. Yeah, they help you with the steering. So instead of actually manipulating the steering wheel, you're manipulating a little dial on the dash. And so in that, it's to turn the trailer right, you go to the right, to turn the trailer left, to go to the left. Whereas sometimes, depending on where your hands are on the steering wheel, you have to like make this backwards translation in your mind. So the thing that I do when I'm backing up a trailer all the time is I always put in too much steering input. You don't need a lot of steering input to back it up. Just a little tiny movement will get that trailer to go in the direction you want it to go. And don't be ashamed of asking somebody for help. Like ask somebody to spot you. Or if you see somebody that's got like a, a really long trailer and you see them back it up like a boss and you're nervous, like just ask them to help you. They will help you. People are really friendly in general and they just want to help and they don't want you to like block the parking lot because you've messed up backing it up. So don't be afraid to ask for help. So uh, if you were to tell someone who's about to buy their first, let's say pickup truck, uh, this is all new to them, what to focus on in terms of the things we're talking about. There's a lot of things, of course, but in terms of its ability to carry payload or to tow, uh, is one or the other more important? I mean, I assume payload because it's always, you know, in the bed, but is towing something that a person should look at even if they don't plan to tow and may start doing it later? Yeah, I mean, it's tough to say, right? Because it's definitely a lifestyle choice. You know, like I know how much I need to tow. My race trailer weighs about 7,000 pounds. So I know that I can um, I can tow it with a midsize, but it's kind of better with the full size. Um, it's a little bit easier with the full size truck. So it really just depends on your lifestyle. If you think that you're going to, that you are going to tow, just think about what you and your family need. Like, are you a family of eight people and you're going to need to get it like a giant fifth wheel? Well, then you're going to want to get a heavy duty truck. If you think that in the future, you might just get like a tiny little um, lightweight Airstream trailer, you can probably do that with a midsize or a full size truck. So it's just, you just kind of have to predict what you want to do in the future and think about what's right for your lifestyle. Okay. And that's what brings us back to everyone's concern about what is the towing and the payload rating. So they know if they've got headroom for, you know, future interests, if you will. Uh, last thing I want to ask you is, if you buy a truck that's got a certain rating in terms of towing or payload, and you find you need more later, is this, are these mods that you can do to a truck reasonably to upgrade its capacity, or do you need to buy what you need from the factory? You know, you could upgrade um, in terms of cooling, right? Like you could upgrade a, a radio, you could upgrade a transmission cooling fan, you could upgrade an oil cooler fan. All of those things could happen. You can upgrade your brakes. But at the end of the day, it also comes down to the truck's frame. And that is not necessarily going to be able to be um, modified at your house. Yeah, no kidding. Well, you might be able to, but I don't think no, most- No, I am far, far from a mechanic. 